what's up? We're gonna be live. Well, we are live, but we're gonna be live with our amazing friend Ken in just a momento. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, just oh. oh yeah. We're ready. Okay, I just have to let you in. Here we go. Oh for some reason, Ken, it's not letting me do the thing. It might be the device you're on. Or you might not have the right uh, maybe I need to follow you. Hmm. Yeah, it's not working just yet, but Ken, if you want to try another device or another thing, I, I literally don't have the option to add you onto this live yet, but it's okay because we're doing so good. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Now we're talking. Hello, everyone. Yeah, brother. All right. Now, now we're talking. How are you? I tried to let it go through my computer, but I guess we'll do the phone, so that works as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that's their deal. P pleasure to meet you. Welcome. Pleasure to meet you, too. Is this the first time we've met? I feel like we know each other, but, but oh, look at this. Sweetie. I know, I know. My cat's all of a sudden, oh, there's someone. Attention. I want attention, too. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, uh, how are you? Are you in Alberta? Yeah, yeah, just outside of Calgary, so Calgary region, and um, yeah, it's uh, you're in whereabouts? Vancouver. Vancouver, good. Yeah. I love I love my BC friends. Of lots of them. Yeah, are you connected with Deanne and uh, your holistic earth? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Nice. It's actually a friend of mine her niece or something like that. Yeah. Cool. So it's a small community. <laughs> well, I love it. So this is fun. So this is the first time we've actually like chatted, but we've kind of, um, you know, messaged online and stuff. So I, I actually don't really know much other than you're in some sort of wellness business. Um, and so why don't you actually, you know, tell me for the first time, but then also tell everyone who's watching. Yeah, welcome everybody. Pleasure to meet everyone. My name is Ken Lewicki and the company, the name of my company is called Channeling Incorporated. Mm -hmm. And you can always find me on channelinginc.com. And I basically teach anything and everything to do with channeling, like everything. I have full, like, you know, 50 plus page curriculum, wow. like full certification programs, channeling level one, yeah. level two, level three. I have mastermind groups. I have animal communication certification workshops. Oh. Like, it's all to do with channeling. Channeling, channeling, channeling is my thing. Um, <laughs> and what I'm talking about, like it's super comprehensive, like super, super comprehensive. I train thousands of people around the world. I love what I do. And it's kind of like um, personal development on steroids. <laughs> yeah. So uh, one Ooh. of the biggest things that I, I love about what I do is I, um, it's all about empowering the people. So like I, I want to teach them how to be able to channel to eventually get to a point where they can do it with when I'm not around. So a lot yeah. of people, they're, they're new to spirituality or maybe they've had a spiritual awakening and it could have been, you know, a few months ago or, or 20, 30 years ago. And they really want to take their channeling abilities way higher, way beyond anything that they've ever done. And mm -hmm. that's where I come. So I just wow. teach them like amazing, amazing skills and everything to do with channeling your spirit guides to channeling mm -hmm. uh, uh, totem animals, your mm -hmm. uh, um, crystal divas and sprites, fairies, dragons, angels, archangels, medical mediumship, like super, super advanced stuff, you name it. It's, it's tons wow. of fun. What's your yeah. favorite from the channel for you? So my number one most important people that I channel are my spirit guides because those are the ones that help me in my day-to-day -day life to help me make sure that I'm back in all the areas of my life. So like my my personal life, my finances, my soul's purpose for dating, um, my relationships, my like my passion, my hobbies, my health, all those things. Absolutely, number one, I always tell all my students, your number one go-to people are your spirit guides. 
and then any, that's like 80 to 90 percent of all my channeling and then anything over and above that's all bonus <laughs> oh i love it that's so fun here i'm gonna i'm gonna get a, a better light thing do you want to do some channeling right now absolutely yes Dude, let's, let's go i love it i am like i am one of the biggest abraham hicks fans and bashar fans so i'm very very aware of channeling and and what it's all about and i, I i'm stoked let's let's do something yeah so um are you okay if i walk you through something real quick yeah please okay so um i'm gonna just ask you some questions what i want you to do is just just go with what's coming to you just run with it okay just go with what's coming to you so first thing i'll get you to do and and anybody watching you're welcome to join along uh join in on this so first thing i'll get you to do is just take a nice deep breath so three two one nice deep breath and actually just look down with your eyes into your heart center so just breathe in your heart center so one more nice deep breath good good now i'm going to ask you some questions just trust what's coming to you if there is one spirit guide physically around you right now in your room where would this one guide be that's right no that's that's correct and um how does this guide feel on your backside? Be like kind of up, up above or? How does it feel? Yeah, how does this one feel? Um, nurturing and mm, it feels like, like I got kind of like a picture of like an angel with like um, light robes that are kind of like washing over me and sunshine. So like really light, light and loving. Okay, so now really breathe into this one and really just enhance your connection. So three, two, one, nice deep breath into this one. And now bring it down into your heart center. Good. And how, what are you feeling right now inside your body, like your torso region? Mm. It's funny. The first thing that came to mind was warm, but as soon as I thought warm, I felt cold. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, that, that's it. Can I tell you why? Sure. So stay connected as I'm telling you this, and you can check with this angel. It is an action. It's, it is an angel, which is really cool. So that's really awesome. Mm. Um, because you're feeling the warmth from the angel, mm. but also tend to uh, dissipate the air around us which makes it us feel cold <laughs> but the, the, you're feeling the warm feelings is that is this correct yeah and how would you besides what you just described this angel how else would you describe this one mm. weird i just got a bunch of like devil imagery and like darkness uh don't know what that's about um i would like words uh happy and relaxed and faithful where is this angel now around you i just feel it somewhere up here above my head yeah and what's different about the angel now when you focus in on it uh what's what what's different about this angel now nothing that i know of just tune in just it's so funny I'm, I'm i'm getting like the like the opposite like it feels like <laughs> i'm i'm getting like weird like like dark imagery like, yeah. like not yeah like like just I, I don't know whether that's like the balance of like light and dark or that's what's coming it actually it actually is but it's so i'll tell you what i'm getting you can verify this from her is mm -hmm. that um part of it is she's showing you that there's like stuff and we all have this all humans do where we're kind of like you know trying to navigate the our inner darkness if you want to call it inner demons mm -hmm. and she's trying to show you that you can transcend them mm -hmm. with her help so three, right. two, 
Three, two, one, nice deep breath in and just breathe it in and, and let her help you with this. Trusting what you're getting, what is she trying to do with you now? Um, I don't know. I hear the word safe. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to like tear up. Um, it feels like she's like, or I don't know, whatever. Feels like it's more here now than than above. That's right. Where primarily in your torso region is she working? Um, I guess more like the lower. Yeah, that's correct. So breathe, breathe into it. Help her out. Work with her. Three, two, one. Nice deep breath into that area. And just send love and light to it. Good. And do you feel what she's doing down there? Not really. Focus in. She's doing something. I can I can see it. I can feel it. I see like a hammer, maybe like tools or like, I don't know. Yeah. Doing something. So what is she trying to chisel away? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> maybe help me let go of some things. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you another question as she's still working on you. If there was someone else around you, someone in your highest and best interest, who else might be around you right now? My dad. That's right. And where's your where's your dad around you? Mm, like maybe over here. Mm -hmm. right. And what's the reason he's coming in right now? Um, I mean, he passed away when I was 15, and he's definitely you know around a lot and. I feel him a lot. So I, he's part of my part of my my crew. So just focus on him on your left side. Let's ask him the reason he's coming in right now. Trust what you're getting. Say it out loud. Uh, why are you coming in right now, or what I hear? Yeah, sure, either one. Mm, I'm coming in to help you clear up some old stuff, be happier, and more in the vortex and. Do your thing that you're supposed to do here, and which purpose? What is, what is it you're supposed to do here? <laughs> According to him, what? According to him, what is it you're supposed to do here? Oh, uh, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, ask him. According to him, yeah. what what is he According, really supposed according to, do? to you, what am I supposed to do here? You should just stay pure, mm -hmm. not think about other things and try and release like relax and let let go and trust trust the process and let us do our thing okay so can you do some of this right now so yeah just, so just breathe and just let it go You feel how proud he is of you? <laughs> he really is. I'm just like it's it just it just warms my heart to feel his mm. like oh my son. <laughs> <laughs> what else does he want to say to you right now? Mm. I'm always here. Mm -hmm. I've been here always. Mm. I love you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Love you very love you so much. I'm so proud of you. I feel like you're doing really good. What areas are what area or areas of your life is he here to help you with? Hmm. Um definitely business. I feel like I the big focus for me right now and yeah. I've I've gotten another uh medium told me that he he had some uh some advice for me on that and um yeah that feels like the main that's a big one for me it's a big 
what okay. what component of business there's another guy who helps you with business as well but what component does your father help you with what part of business um maybe more of the relationships and the okay. uh, uh continuing healthy harmonious connections with people especially like your team members yeah yeah he's really like about unity mm. and connection and fellowshipping relationships yeah mm. yeah which is what you're doing right now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's saying you're a master at relationships. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. No, it's a compliment for sure. It's a big, yeah, I love it. yeah. He loves what you're doing with your business and you unifying people and bringing mm. people together, like-minded people. Mm. He's saying it's needed in this time. Mm. Do you, yeah. Does he agree? Do you feel this from him? Yeah. And what else is he trying to tell you right now? Mm. He says, I'm doing so good. Mm. I want you to focus on building relationships. Um, uh, with those who are helping you move forward. Mm. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you know in your mind who he's talking about. There's there's mm -hmm. certain people in your mind that you know who he's talking about. Like there's people you're thinking of, like those are the ones he wants you to really nurture those relationships with, ones that are in alignment with you that are uh, it's a symbiotic and uh, symbiosis and uh, what's it called? Uh, interdependent relationships. Mm. Where there's like collaborative. Then mm. a win win for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead and uh, take a moment. Thank your guide. Thank your dad. He's really cool. I like him. Mm -hmm. And. Yeah, human too <laughs> the, the the female angel is still working on you but uh mm. you can thank her as well if you're okay with her still working on you yeah 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 mm. congratulations <laughs> wow mm. good work thank you mm. how are you feeling Doing great. That was awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> That's surprising. I thought you were going to channel. I wasn't expecting to do anything. Oh, I was channeling with you. I love it. Yeah, of course. That's so great. Yeah. That was fun. Mm. What a nice thing. It's so cool that we can just do that. You know, it's like, oh, there you are. Here we are. Just yeah. right there. What's up? It's yeah. really, really cool. Mm. So what I did with you is literally like the way I live my life. Like, yeah anywhere anytime on the spot in the moment um i'll be like one of one of my friends hey you want to go up for coffee we'll be hanging out at a coffee shop and channeling the whole time while we're there mm. doesn't matter where we are you know go for a car ride go for a hike go for a walk doesn't matter yeah just channel yeah you got good cell reception anywhere in the world yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow oh that's so cool mm. what a treat mm. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, that definitely uh, explains what you do to everyone watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so, and, and literally what we did is like literally the itty bitty bitty tip of the iceberg of what I do with my students. Mm. Yeah, yeah, tell me more, what do you do? When, if you take all my curriculum, like my channeling level one, uh, which is 14 hours plus my channeling level two, 14 hours, channeling level three, 14 hours, and you put all those combined, all those hours together, that's still maybe one to 2% of what I do with my students. Like what I know about channeling, it's insane. Wow. It just never ends. And then after the, my students complete that, then they can qualify for my six month strategic channeling program. And that's mm -hmm. where I work one-on-one -on -one with them for six months to really, really hone their abilities after level three. And then after that, they can qualify for my master channeling mastermind group where we all get together four times a year to really, really do some advanced stuff. And then that's like the, where the major movers and shakers like the real 
major players are because we're like they're in the in the industry they're constantly doing this because they've taken all my workshops so they're practitioners and healers and you name it well it's it's so, so cool. cool yeah this is a whole a whole other side of of like i never i've never thought of that as like a thing um you know so really good job creating that i'm sure you're your guides are, are very happy and proud as well. <laughs> They're celebrating behind me, actually. I feel them. Yeah. Uh, wow. Wow. I want to know how it kind of came about is what happened was like way back when I started doing this in 2004, I never had anyone to teach me this. I never had anyone walk me through it. And I, so I'm like, am I going crazy? Like, am I making this up? Am I just, you know, and I, there were, there were a lot of dark times and there were a lot of hurdles that I had to overcome and there's a lot of obstacles. And, and so, what I did is I, as I was working a full-time day job and raising my daughter full-time as a single father in the evenings and weekends, I would be, you know, developing my own curriculum, doing one-on-one -on -one sessions with people and then teaching classes. And then eventually I'm like, no, I need to make this into a full certification program, like a weekend workshop. And, and the reason why I do it is because I always think, man, what if I had someone like me who could walk me through those first few years, those first five to 10 years and really help me overcome those hurdles and get this stuff mm -hmm. down packed and know how to work with and navigate and through all these different energies and, and uh, you know, souls and beings and everything you could imagine. Like if, where would I be now if I had someone like me? So then I developed yeah. curriculum around it to help people get to where I'm at. And all I want for everybody is to be able to teach them how to do this, how to channel so that they can do what I can do and even greater. Mm. And, and it's all about empowering them to be able to eventually get to a point where they can do this without me, which is what I want. That's great. That's what I love about teaching people how to channel. And if you think about channeling, it really is the foundation to all spirituality. Because when you learn how to channel really well, you can use it for anything in all the areas of your life. Like yeah. everything you can, now that you've experienced, you can imagine, right? Yeah. It's just like a deeper form of like intuition, like knowing what foods to pick at the grocery store or whatever. It's like, and even like I love Abraham talks about, you know, those basketball players who are in the zone, they're channeling while they're doing that. Like they, that's how they know the timing and that there's just so many things. And yeah, it's, it's so, I saw, I saw this, uh, I went to a hockey game once and I saw this player and he was so much more like, amazing to watch than every other player on the ice and i'm like what you know how, like what's what what is that like of course there's skill but everyone in the nhl is really skilled and it just was so like it's so wild to watch and i feel like that's the the you know the and people talk about it they're like oh he's in the zone or like you know feeling the flow or whatever and and i yeah it's so cool to like see the real world applications of that and and he is so cool I'm, doing that. I'm checking he was in the zone yeah Huh, yeah, yeah. It was channeling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's I've I've had that with music, where I just start receiving songs, and that's I'm like I'm just going for a walk and not thinking about anything, and all of a sudden I hear this new song in my head, and I start, you know, okay, I guess I should record this or something, or just listen to it. But it's it's yeah. so different than than trying to I I never I I never wrote songs before, so I only knew how to channel songs. And then I, I, once or twice, I tried to like write a song and it was so bad. <laughs> and the, the, the channeled stuff was so poetic and powerful <laughs> and beautiful. And I was like, whoa, this is amazing. And I, I totally, and I get that too with movies, especially movies with lots of sequels, where like the first movie was very creative and, and uh, came through. But then the sequels are just trying to copy that and they suck, even though they're, they're the same structure. And you're like, what's the difference? Like, what, what makes one movie that they seem so similar, but why is one movie so good and one movie just fine or it's not good? And it, it's, yeah, it's all about the energy that, that I think the people are, who are doing it are, are carrying. Well, if you think of, like, Mozart, mm, yeah. he channeled that music. If you think of Albert Einstein used to walk to <laughs> university, like, mumbling to himself, he was channeling. And he channeled like the, uh, you know, theory of relativity equals MC square. So science, this isn't anything new to humankind. The only thing I, I do with people is I teach them how to do it intentionally on purpose yeah. and rock the crap out of it and really take it to whole new levels, yeah. like way beyond anything they could imagine. Yeah. And the, the two most important things about channeling is 
always, always know who you're channeling, where you're getting the information from, and then how you're getting the information. And then taking that information and really getting very specific, detailed, useful, practical information rather than just kind of general information. And then this way you can make it like real practical in your everyday life, like mm -hmm. super practical. Like, oh, mm -hmm. I want to write, let's channel that and be very like, you know, or I want to use it for business or I want to use it to improve my relationships with my children or my spouse or my partner or whatever, or maybe my health like you mm -hmm. said at the grocery store, but you know the source of the information. So, yeah. so, so. Yeah, it's so interesting. I'm, I'm following a lot of Abraham stuff, and oh. they've recently uh, focused more on uh, calling what you're talking about the receptive mode, where you're, in, you're receiving non-physical words and guidance and intuition and impulses, and really following that as much as possible and living life in that place. And, and how they describe it is just if... If, it, if you feel really, really good and what you're receiving feels really, really good, then you're, you're sort of in the zone. But if you're not feeling good or you're, and what you're receiving doesn't feel good, you can still receive thoughts that are thought forms that humans have created that are like more negative in nature and receive, you can still receive impulses to do things that are not in alignment with your highest good, um, but it'll feel off and you'll feel off. And so it's important to like, and she says that meditation is a great way to, 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 to like get in the zone. And for me, I use meditation to check. So I'll, I'll just, if I'm not sure, I'll stop and I'll try and meditate. And if right away, as soon as I start to meditate, I'm like, oh, I start receiving. I know that I'm right there. And if, if, I, if I feel like I need to meditate and I need to slow down, then I know that I was a little bit off and I need to like reset and kind of recalibrate. And then I'll start receiving mm -hmm. usually pretty quick, unless it's something pretty serious, but. Really yeah happened. yeah awesome that's see then i love what you're doing because um everything i do is i when i i used to be in it for 11 years oh, cool. so when i started um creating my own curriculum and spirituality I, I keep asking myself how can i make this practical how can i make this useful how can i make this so like pragmatic so every day every like life and that's what you just described is beautiful it's it's singing to my soul because you're making like she's making it Abraham Esther Hicks, she's making it very practical, useful, like, this is how I do this. And it gets real world, real world results. Because mm -hmm. it's fun to go all this woo woo stuff. But how about if we make it like, like, oh, I, I want to like improve my relationships with my child, like, isn't that mm -hmm. such a wonderful blessing? Or mm -hmm. I want to uh, get promoted at work. Yeah. So how would I use this to improve myself so I can work towards, you know, promotions at work? in a good way where it benefits everybody for the good mm -hmm. or how yeah. can I use to unite people and bring like create community. Yeah. So just beautiful, yeah. practical, tangible results. I love yeah. it. Lady yeah. in the United States are one of my clients and she uses it for bodybuilding and she's just won mm -hmm. championships and she's like, I want to bring spirituality to bodybuilding. And I'm like, mm -hmm. how cool is that? I want to bring channeling to bodybuilding. Love and it. she does about being in the zone but she does it more than that she actually channels her guides to oh now i need to work on this and then do that next and then it's really cool and she's 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 actually won like gold medals and stuff it's wild wow so cool i feel like the word channeling to me implies like when i think about it i think of like it's it's like almost like a ceremony and it's a process and it requires a lot of time and effort to like get there and what you're talking about is more about like how can you be in a state of like flow or what you're calling channeling, but like when you're talking to your kids or making dinner or doing the dishes, like it's 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 very practical and it's interesting because the language of channeling, I think for most people, is very uh, spiritual and very like it it feels like something that's out of a lot of people's potential to like reach like a normal most normal people would be like oh that's not me i can't do that and so it's very interesting I, i'd be super curious like to have for like for you to like a b test you know different words and how what, how it resonates with people because it's i feel like there's such a it's a but again yeah i mean people a, anyone who's ready for it will be ready for it no they'll, they'll find their way there but it's very yeah. interesting and i have people from all over the world like reaching out to me they want to learn channeling they want to learn psychic development they want to learn spiritual develop like abilities and uh by the way little tip mm. if you ever 
Donna, while you're driving, highly recommend it to keep your eyes open. <laughs> I, I drive, I channel while I drive all the time. Like I channel at the gym when I'm working out with the big meatheads and we're lifting weights, I'm channeling. And when I'm in the yoga class and everyone in the yoga class knows what I do. So afterwards, sometimes people come up to me and say, oh, I felt my grandma come to me. And I'm like, oh yeah. So I connect to her grandma right down on the spot. We're having a conversation like you and I are right now. I said, yeah, this is the messages your grandma wants to pass along. And she's like, oh, thank you very much. And then gives me a hug and then we go on our way. And you know, it's just, I bump into somebody at the grocery store and I'm like, oh, I'm meant to give this person a message, so I give them a message, and it's just an everyday part of my life. So what what people originally do is they think, oh, channeling. So oh, I I have all these other commitments in my life, and now I need to add channeling to that extra, you know, on my plate kind of thing yeah. I have to do. But I'm like, no, 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 no. You do channeling is the core of who you are, and while yeah. you do all those things, you're channeling while you're you know, at mm -hmm. your job and, and exercising and having conversations with your partner or your children or, you know, just your soul's purpose. Like, what am I here for? You do that while you're channel, you channel while you're doing all these other things. Yeah. And it, see how that can yeah. have all the areas of your life? Yeah, to me, it's like the foundation because if you're not in that place, it's, it's like the, the potential of that moment is less than if you are in that place and you're actually aware of, of the, the higher intelligence that, that has, for me, I think of it like our soul is kind of on top of a mountain and we're down in the bushes and those trees yes. and we can only see so far and know so much because we're sort of limited, but they can see the whole field and see where all the treasure is and where everyone else is. And they can like kind of guide you walkie talkie style to like exactly the path of least resistance to what you want. And I love how Abraham, you know, she, describes that as like that's your emotional guidance system when, when you feel really good it's like the universe is saying like hotter 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 when you feel really bad it's like colder 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 and that it's just a game of hot and cold like follow your feelings follow your your intuition and and you'll sort of uh just just rendezvous with things a lot of the most profound manifestations in in my life i'm thinking of like big financial ones right now have happened purely out of the energy that we created and then someone showed up and just said hey are you looking for this money like oh we have this money for you basically like it, it it's almost like we didn't have to do the work of looking for it or finding it we just had to get in this zone of clarity of like what we want why we want it why it's going to be amazing and then the, it just kind of shows up and it's like the the effort of like oh you have to go meet with all these investors you have to go do all this stuff it, i mean we didn't we didn't have to yet. It was like, it was very easy. It just showed up. And that, that really helped me see like, oh, when I feel like, oh, I need to work hard or I need to like put in the time or, I, you know, there's, there's going to be a, one of my people that was talking to us about business was like, you're going to meet with hundreds of investors before anyone says yes. And, and we, we didn't even finish making our presentation before someone called us and said, hey, are you looking for this money? And it was the first person that called and they called us out of the blue. And then, it, you know, we had the money in like 10 days and yeah. it was easy. It was fun. And everyone was happy about it. And it was like, Oh, this is amazing. If you check right now and I'm checking, like, were your guys involved? Was that person's guys involved? Were they too? Yeah. yeah, of course. Like that's, I feel like that's the, that's the thing that's really interesting is like, not only will I be guided to, do and and go to certain places but also other people will be guided in in ways that they wouldn't have been if i wasn't ready because they there's no point in creating a rendezvous if one party's not there and so like it's timing it's like both people have to rendezvous and, and if both people are connected enough it'll just it'll just happen and it'll be like oh i should call this person or like it'll just pop into their head and like oh I, you know i gotta call shine what's going on there and, and and they're like if you actually like looked at the the sequence of events and thoughts that actually like made that happen it's probably quite profound in terms of like the company that they were working with and like there was so many people in different circumstances involved to actually you know end up with that check in our hand it's like wow okay that's cool yeah and if you only knew if you could only see what i can see what's what the the pieces that were maneuvering in the background for that to all line up in the spirit, spiritually yeah it's wild but you, and you then, hit, 
big bang on, which is you're in resonance, you're in alignment, you're in that high vibration state that Esther Hicks talks about, Abraham Hicks, right? She talks about that, where you're in that vibrational state to allow that to, to come in, and so are they. So then the two, they match, you two match. Right. But there's, there's spirit guide stuff happening on, there's, there's a cash record stuff happening, there's lots of stuff happening, it's wild. Yeah, and the, the funny thing is that the, uh, the it, was a, it was a sponsorship that, that we got and, and, and an investment uh, as well. And the company that gave us the sponsorship was um, Coin Payments, which is a crypto payment app. And this was in like 20, 2016, 2017 maybe. Wow. And so Bitcoin was $1,000 when this happened. And they said, you know, you should really put some of this 50,000 that we just gave you into Bitcoin. And we said, sure, whatever. Didn't really know anything about it. Didn't do it. And then, you know, it would have been a lot of money right now. And so it was, that was really fascinating because um, we were really in alignment to receive it, but we weren't finely tuned enough to get the message, even though it was physically articulated to us to buy <laughs> some fucking Bitcoin with this, we didn't, we didn't get the impulse to like actually follow through with that. And so that's, I feel like there's always levels, layers of it where it's like the universe is always trying to support us, but we can only be supported as much as we're open to receive the, the, the right messages. And so I'm, I'm really trying to be, pay more attention, be more receptive when things show up like that. I'm like, okay, wait, what, why is this why is this showing up right now even if i don't understand it like with nfts i'm like i don't really get it but it's showing up so i'm gonna like learn it i'm gonna understand it and now i do and i'm like oh, okay it's a big deal one of the biggest foundational pieces i teach in my channeling level one workshop so like i had like three clients today and each one i'm like so first thing i help them to do is be able to identify the source of where they're getting information from is it coming from their soul is it coming from their higher self is it coming from one of their guides and if so which guide is it coming from and yeah. then once i out a channel and know where they're getting it from then one of the biggest things that i emphasize is like okay now that you're getting the message from your guides they will never steer you wrong right go ahead and check they're like nope they always have my greatest good in mind so they always do yeah. and then and now just follow their go guidance, like follow it every single time. If they tell you not to do something, don't do it. No matter how much you want to, just don't. Like have you ever, have you ever done something where you're like, oh, I know I shouldn't do this, but you did it anyways. They're like, don't, yeah. right? Sure. And then yeah. the other is on the other end, of the, end of, other end of the spectrum, it's like when they tell you to do something, do it right away so you don't mm. miss that. Yeah, because like, a lot of the time there's a time window. Point right and and yeah. so now that i've taught you these skills on how to channel your guides and your your soul and your higher self now it's a matter of just following their guidance and then once you do oh man just watch the serendipities and the synchronicities yeah. and all that's the magic unfold it's just amazing <laughs> uh this is so fun um i i would love so have you been on unite yet unite our love oh yeah. yeah 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 i love it it's wonderful I love it and so, so we just finished building this thing called the Love Stream, which is going to be kind of like a mix between Zoom and, and Clubhouse, where eventually there'll be like, you know, multiple things happening simultaneously. There'll be a channeling class over here and a yoga class over here and some sound healing and breath work and then just a, you know, hang out about spirituality and a chat about wellness or a, a, a talk, a speaker. And so we're, right now we're kind of gathering the, the community who, would love to actually share um, the, the, the stuff. And so it'd be really interesting to talk about doing like a regular, you know, um, thing where people could drop in and just connect with you. And it could be a way for you to meet new people and a way for people to sort of play with this. And, you know, yeah. you could do it ticketed or free or whatever. And so it's, I'd love to, love to chat about that. That would be great. That actually feels yeah. really in alignment, really in resonance. And yeah, I love the community that you're building. I've been following you, you two for a while and I just love it. I love, watching like how much like i'm really big on community uh, i have like literally thousands of people around the world that i'm connecting with because how many people can you talk to about this stuff yeah not right? everyone i'm like but now look around you look in the room look in the classes and it's not just these people you see it's when you graduate you're gonna have a whole introduced a whole community and and then now you can talk openly about this stuff because you're not you're not crazy you're not weird what you're feeling <laughs> sensing it's real and what i started doing this 
when I first started, started doing this in 2004, they didn't have the technology that they have now. Now yeah. we can literally set up the highly sensitive camera systems in your room and we could capture your spirit guides on camera. Like wow. how crazy is that? So your father that you can feel, we could capture him on camera now. We have the technology. You might've seen him on like those ghost hunter shows, the technology, the te oh, it's in its cool. infancy, but it's in the wow. next five, 20 years, you, we're going to be able to capture um, our spirit guides in even more detail than we when than we can now, but they're real. They're as real as you and I are just in non physical uh, form. Is that and what so, orbs are in, in yeah. digital photos? Well it's so yeah, it's orbs, that's their soul, but they can present themselves as like a like a person, like in like you yeah. and I like standing up erect with and you know wearing wow. glasses and a hat or you know clothing. Love and it. so I asked my students, I'm like, okay, hey, what era are they from? and how are they dressed and what age are they presenting themselves as and did you two have a past lifetime together and who are you to to each other in that past lifetime and why is that relevant to you now as they're your guide now in this lifetime like it's wild well i love this stuff it's so fun it's so fun i just love it especially I, it's fun to like think about past lives and big you know like esoteric more esoteric stuff but applying it to real life and, and like, how can this help me today is really cool. I love, I love your approach. It feels really balanced. One, one of the things I do in my channeling level one workshop is I actually have them do a past life regression and where they go to a positive past lifetime where they had a positive experience and then they, they really live that experience again. And then what I do is I have them bring, cause their soul wants to take them to something that's relevant to where they are in this lifetime. So then what I do is I have them bring whatever, skills, attributes, qualities, characteristics from that past lifetime and implement it into this lifetime. Mm -hmm. And then really just yeah. breathe it in and bring that forward because we've had so many amazing lifetimes. So why not bring it forward into this present lifetime and make it applicable and practical? Love that. Yeah, it's so many cool things. And then I have them go on to a, I do a past life regression on a different planet that they've incarnated on. Now we're getting like into crazy cool stuff. Like that's fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's I could just go on. I love, I love you know, you'd be, you'd be so great on one of those goop uh, shows on Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, Gwyneth Paltrow and goop, that whole thing. I know Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. Like from no doubt. Uh, no, no, that's, that's a different woman. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow, the actress, created this oh, website called Goop. Oh, yeah. And, yes. And, and they, have a, they have a Netflix show. And the, the first one, I think it's called The Goop Lab, um, they actually bring on a medium. Uh, it's, the, it's the last show, last episode of their Netflix special. And it's, it's really cool. They really try and bring um, – they, they do one on energy work. They do one on mediumship, uh, cold water therapy with Wim Hof, uh, like a bunch of uh, – really cool. Um, they're really – like pushing the envelope and and sharing some more some more out there stuff but trying to trying to bring it you know so that it's more mainstream friendly and 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 sh sharing like oh you know how could you possibly know this medium person like everyone i think people kind of get that stuff or you know john williams or whatever people on tv like they they're kind of like oh, okay this is real like my you know this guy couldn't possibly know this stuff about me and my grandma and whatever so yeah people are starting to like yeah this, this makes sense so yeah. That's that's one of my goals is to bring spirituality to the masses and make it just a normal mm -hmm. everyday kind of mm -hmm. thing. Like you don't doesn't have to be all weird. There's you don't need to have all these uh, rituals or ceremonies or all this stuff. Like you can if you want, but you or you can just start like you could just channel. Yeah. Like just yeah. like I do earlier, I'm like let's just channel, let's go. Mm -hmm. You know, I was yeah. uh, I was at a, at a, a coffee shop with somebody when I and I'm like oh. Have you ever done a past life regression before? They're like, no. I'm like, well, let's do it now. They're like, here. I'm like, sure, why not? Boom, I take them into a past life regression. Like, have them channel their soul into a past life. Like, why not? Like, yeah. you know, and it's just an everyday normal part of your life. And my feeling is in the next, you know, 10 to 20 years from now, this is going to be the norm. People will just be normally, like, this will be the norm. And the people that aren't doing this will be in the minority. It's not that we'll chastise them or put them down. They're always welcome. But I, yeah. I have the feeling, I don't know if you do, but I have the feeling that the way things, because I've been doing this for a long time, like almost close to 20 years now, it's getting close to that. And it's becoming prevalent everywhere in a good way, mm -hmm. which is great. Yeah. And yeah. it's so healthy.
people. And it, it's really helping us as a species to ascend to a more higher level of where we really need to go. Because I don't know about you, but the way that my parents and grandparents did it just doesn't work anymore. We can't keep doing the same thing that our parents did it. We need to do something different in a better, healthier way. And that's what our, where I feel channeling comes in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we when we built, uh, when we started thinking about Unite and the vision of it and the purpose of it, it really was to bring more well-being um, modalities and and just even like when you go to when you go to certain people's houses or certain events, like the physical space has an energy, and you can just feel more relaxed as you come in. And that was always the intention with Unite is like let's create a, a one platform where all the people who are into wellness, and spirituality, and 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 doing you know any whether it's product services events or content or just community you bring you bring all those people into one place and and bring all the offerings into one place so people can see what's available what helps with different stuff so if you're feeling stressed or anxious you know what's what if people like you found useful and what could what could help you in this moment and just have all these different options lots of them for free some of them are paid and just create this like one stop shop for everything well being and so that was kind of the vision and and at the time I, we were doing our investor presentation and um they they ask you to come up with a, a total addressable market, which is like the total number of people in the world who may at one point use your service. And so I looked in the wellness uh, and sustainable goods markets were about seven something trillion, like a, it was a big number. And it was about the same um, size as the Airbnb market um, for travel. And so I was like, okay, maybe we'll be a company similar in size to Airbnb, similar business model, because we're not going to run ads uh, like Facebook and Google. We're going to do transaction. So it's more we're, we're more incentivized to really connect people to what they're looking for. And, and people can trust that we're uh, that, like what they're seeing is, is based more on ratings and, and people's experiences with things versus who's got the most money to run the ads and whatever, which isn't always the most ideal, uh, you know, solution. So anyways, so I'm, I'm thinking, okay, maybe our company is going to be worth similar to Airbnb. So right at that time they were in like 37 billion, uh, whatever that they were worth the 37 billion. So I was like, okay, maybe that's where we'll go one day, just thinking and having fun. And then we go for this drive down to California to meet all these tech people at this uh, conscious technology conference, which was really cool. All yeah. these uh, people building, uh, you know, VR for meditation and, and wellness tech, like really cool stuff. So we go down there, it's called the Transformational Technology Conference, I think, Transformative Technology, TransTech for short. So we're driving down and I'm getting into the zone and receiving and being really like in a flow and eyes open. And all of a sudden I just hear this clear as day in a way that is not normal for me, so it stood out. And the voice said, you know you're building something that's gonna be bigger than anything on the planet right now, right? Right. And I was like, nope, I don't know that. Like, tell me more. <laughs> and and I, I, and I kind of got shown this vision of, a, of you know, in, in what, however many years, like work is going to also transform. And so people are going to want to work in different ways. And it's already starting where people are craving that uh, flexibility of like an Uber driver or a, a delivery person. And it's really helpful for them to just be able to work when they want and have, have it be all kind of done through technology. And I was thinking like, oh, well, we could do the same thing. Like if you're a graphic designer and there's a project that needs one, it'll it, like we can build technology that can connect you not only on skill, but on values and, and other things. And, and so I, I started getting this bigger vision than I had previously had. And that what we're creating with Unite is more of a personalized connection platform. And when I really thought about it, I'm like, well, what we're really building is we're technologifying our soul and our intuition. We're wow. creating technology to, to speed up and to physicalize what our souls are already trying to help us connect with and wow. do it and build, build more structure on that. And I just was like, oh, that's cool. And so that's, 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 that's our vision. That's what we're doing. We're, we're creating digital intuition. <laughs> It's interesting because uh, I've seen like futuristic kind of movies and shows and where technology can go and it can be used so much for the good of like doing these things that we're doing 
beyond anything we could even imagine. So that was actually your spirit guide that told you that. I was I was checking as you were talking, and yeah, yeah what you're building is way beyond anything that even exists right now. Yeah, it's pretty wild. It feels fun. It feels like a fun journey to go on, and it's like I feel kind of like Frodo in The Hobbit, where yeah. I had no I had no interest in business. I didn't. I I lived five years ago, six years ago. I literally didn't know much or anything about most of it. Entrepreneurship was like, what is that? You know, I, it just wasn't a part of my life. I was into to community and wellness and I, I, I worked with kids and people with disabilities and I was like doing my thing and I received music and, you know, I, I thought I was going to be some kind of artist or coach or, you know, healer or something like that because I was in that spiritual community. Yeah. And then I just started receiving this, these images and this guidance and, we started to run events and I was like, Oh, I, I prefer being the behind the scenes person than the presenter. I want to, I want to craft the experience for the community and make sure it's really amazing and then sell it and, you know, find people and connect to everyone rather than be the, you know, the, the teacher up front. And it, it just happened organically. And then, you know, this, the vision for the tech came in and it's like, Oh, I guess I'm a, a business person now, but it doesn't, I don't feel like I'm in, in a, in the bad sense of it. Like, that people think of like, you know, profit focused all only and kind of like hard nose. I just feel like, okay, this, and, and it feels like that's Steve jobs. I totally resonate with. I feel like he was this kindred spirit, very spiritual. And a lot of these leaders right now are, are similar where they, they just had a vision and they were kind of guided to take on that role of leadership, not because they were craving money and power, but because they really wanted to see something happen in the world and, and felt like they, they could do it or were guided to do it. And I feel like it's the same with me. I'm just like, all right, I guess we're doing it. Let's go. Yeah. And I've really noticed too, how the way that people are doing business is changing drastically. Yeah. And yeah. so like I do in my channeling level three, once they've learned all these skills, we do a section, a whole module on, okay, if you were to create a business around this and it doesn't have to be necessarily around channeling, but how would yeah. you use channeling now to better the world, to, mm -hmm. to, to take your skill sets that you have and your calling and your what you're meant to do at this time, like this part of your life now, like why you're here, why you chose to incarnate, and how can you really take these channeling skills to take it to whole new levels? And a lot of my students, they do, they create businesses that are heart centered, in it for the right reasons, they want to help the people. And I'm like, I just tell people, I say, you go out there and do what you're meant to do, and the money will come. The money will. And it does. And it's it the new way of doing it as far as I'm concerned. And it's, it's interesting because for me, I've experienced both the money coming in a completely, like I, I traveled a little bit and, and I call it my professional hippie days where I <laughs> had very little to like very little money sometimes. And, and I, I, I grew up with a lot of, of abundance i mean not like ridiculous but like i had a car at 16 i went to a private school for two years played hockey like i had, like my parents had enough to kind of you know treat us and, and and give us nice stuff and and i i always felt abundant and felt like i i allowed a lot of abundance throughout my life yeah and and so when i kind of went into the world as an adult i didn't really have a whole lot of programming that taught me to worry about money or think about the cost. So I, I wouldn't really consider that when I was planning something, I'd be like, what do I want to do? I want to do it. Okay. I, and, I, and I would just kind of attract the money or it would just, ha it would just show up but like through really weird ways. Sometimes like people just, Oh, I feel like I should give you some money, like a good friend or whatever. Like, I feel like you could use an extra whatever, or just even like weird things like, Oh, I got a car accident. Someone else was driving and you know, the, I got money from the settlement and, and I wasn't hurt or anything. It was just like, okay, here you go. Just and and just even small things like, oh, stay at our house or you know, let me cook you a meal. And just when I was traveling, especially because yeah, you know, really in the flow. Sometimes like it was so obvious and apparent to me that the universe had my back and was just so supporting me. And then now that with business, it's it feels like the same thing. Like when we're when I'm able to really let it in and just be open. I'll just attract what I need. I'll attract the right timing. Things will just happen. And it's so, it's so nice to feel that trust. And it's happened over, I don't know, 15 years now, at least of being, you know, being in like adult land and, 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 and having to kind of like make my own money. 
but, what um, do you, but a lot of it's been so easy and what do you feel your fun. secret hmm? what do you feel your secret is to this um i think it's a mix of like i've i've experienced enough uh like things that just couldn't be explained by rational minds like just such synchronicities that i'm like okay there's something else going on so i knew that there there's something else happening and then i've experienced enough money flowing in and out that i kind of trusted that it would always be there and i would always have enough and so those foundational pieces were there and then with the business i feel like the big money has come in when i've been very focused on the uh the vision and not the operations so like what's the big vision for this why am i doing it what's the what's the impact i'll have in the world like how is it going to work like just get, like an investor presentation like spending months like months on that like really dialing in and how is this going to work and how's that going to work and oh it's going to be like this and just pure vision pure play mode fun mode like only the like just dreaming as big as i can and just like getting so into it and mapping it out and looking at it and feeling it and just being so excited about it and and those are the times when the big money at the time for me just like showed up is is when we were building our presentation decks for investors and all of our focus was on vision and clarity and and it's interesting because both times we got the specific dollar amount that we were looking for to the penny like cuz cuz one of them we were looking for 111,000 111 dollars and 11 cents cuz we just <laughs> thought it would be funny and we like repeating numbers and and literally that's what the check got made out for you know and and then and the first one was that was 50,000 and boom like that was what it got made out for and it's just very interesting to so it was a lot it was a lot of clarity and specificity yeah mixed with a lot of flow and happiness and no no feeling of worry or stress because there was nothing to do yet there was no business to run yet it was right. it was pre business time it was pre action it was pre like anything happening we didn't we didn't have to do anything so all we were doing was visioning and playing and being excited about it and the money came and it's been a really hard thing to replicate cuz now that we have things happening and there's movement and momentum and projects and timelines and people and and you know budgets and things it's it can be harder to to like take that time but i try and do that every day i have a later sleep schedule i go to bed around like 5 6 7 in the morning versus like you know <laughs> whatever people go to bed and <laughs> and then i'll sleep for 7 hours and get up and and so i spend my nights usually in a really beautiful flow state that's different than my days which are also trying to be in a flow state but I feel like it's a, there's a different level of energy that I'm able to tune into when I'm just me by myself. No one's no one's around and I can just like get really into my zone. So I try and spend like a good a, some good hours or I'll go for a drive or do something that kind of gets me there. I'll try and spend lots of time as much time as possible every day doing that. Yeah, I feel like when I feel into when you're in that um 3 4 5 in the morning like that time when it's there's like really just in congruence it's called like congruent you're in alignment you're just in flow you're in that zone that zen mode yeah there's a reason they call it the witching like those that uh, that hour those hours in the middle yeah. of the night i'm talking about like sometimes that's some of my most creative times there's mm -hmm. times when i'll like wake up at two three in the morning i'm like no i'm not i need to get up i go hop on my computer and then all of a sudden things are just yeah. like flowing out of me and i can't stop it i'm like no no next thing you know two three hours go by and i'm like you know, dead tired, but it was so worth it. It's just yeah. so mad. Yeah. Well, I, I heard that before uh, electricity was invented, people would sort of go to bed at dark, which was like maybe eight o'clock, and they would sleep for four hours till two, and then wake up and do their creative, creative, make love, uh, have have like a meal with the kids, like do like something like very uh, nice and and general, that like good feeling stuff, creative stuff. And then go back to bed at like five and sleep till eight or whatever, and and that was like a normal thing in in pre electron electricity days. Yeah, there's something magic about the magical about that time of, of the evening. Mm, yeah, That's, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you like learning to harness it. 
Yeah, it's very fascinating because I never, obviously, I grew up going to school and 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 working jobs that sometimes didn't allow that, and so I I had a regular sleep schedule, and I was very uh, adaptable. I could kind of you know match my environment well and either go to bed early or go to bed late. I could kind of be flexible, but now that I'm purely in entrepreneur mode and have been for five six years now and a lot of the work that i do doesn't need a specific time and i can work from you know 2 or 3 p.m till 10 or 11 p.m and get uh, you know all the things that i would need to get done anyways so yeah. it doesn't feel like it's hurting me and and i just if if i'm following my intuition and really letting my my soul guide me that's what it's calling me to do. And if I need to get up early, I'll get up early and I'll have a nap or figure it out. But yeah, I've, I've tried to kind of reset my sleep schedule and even went traveling to Europe. And like, I, as soon as I am back and I'm getting in my zone, I, I, I just naturally stay up late and sleep in. That's, that's my, that's, and I've also heard that it's, there's um, like genetic predisposition where uh, as cave people, there's always someone awake to protect the, the tribe and so we certain people have certain you know it's just more natural we produce the sleep chemical at a different time and produce the awake chemical at a different time and and that's just how we are so um for survival reasons yeah <laughs> interesting so I'm, yeah. I'm i'm coming to terms with it and i used to be a little embarrassed about it because it's you know staying up late is not so looked bad upon but sleeping in sometimes is like oh sleeping in late it's not good um, but yeah, I'm able to accomplish everything I need and I can always get up early if I need to. So it's just, that's it's my life right now. The way to do it. One of the things yeah. that I do in my more advanced channeling level three workshop is I, I teach people how to do like, uh, ancestral, ancestral kind of how to mm. find the root cause of what's going on in people's like ancestry. So like mm. the lineage and I actually teach them how to do lineage readings. Mm. Cool. Which is super super cool which you're right because if you think about like when we were caveman days and it's funny how many times like i've had people oh yeah that was like way back generations we're talking like you yeah. know way back <laughs> it's, it's some of the original people on this planet <laughs> it's kind of yeah. Way back. yeah it's so cool crystal did a there's a there's a process called the journey um with uh this woman named brandon bays who you're familiar I've heard of the journey. I've heard of that process. I don't know much about it, but yeah, it's it's um, it's very much about using uh, meditation and like kind of hypnosis to a certain extent to uh, to access uh, past memories and clean them up. And part of it can be to also go into past lives and sort of see the reason for certain things. And so my I don't think my partner, Crystal, uh, both business partner and life partner, um, would mind because uh, she's told this publicly, but she she had kind of grown up with this feeling of resentment towards the world and apparently was kind of an angry kid, even as a baby. And her mom was like, you know, what's going on with this baby? And, uh, and so she's kind of carried that. She had carried that and she went and did this re regression and she learned that she had been this big, powerful king in a past life, and apparently like th like the last life before this one. And that in that kingdom, and she doesn't even know if it's like this reality or another parallel reality, whatever, but she yeah. thinks it was more like a, a magical kind of, she got that it was, it was a kind of a different vibe than, than just like our, our past that we know about on Earth. So anyways, she, she kind of um, said that her role was to really carry the kingdom on her back. And she had to, she made a deal with these, with her spirit guides or with magicians or something that kind of imbued her with special powers to be able to protect her kingdom. And it kind of like turned her pretty heavy and dark to be able to like do that. Like she kind of had to take on a little more like than, but she was willing to do it. But the deal was that the next life was going to be all flowers and rainbows and much easier. And she wanted to be a woman and have kids and like not have that hardcore stuff. And when she, when she, she, she sort of remembered coming through into this world 
yeah. and feeling this darkness because there was a lot of weird stuff going on with her family system and like a, just you know things that, that are not nice and so she felt that darkness as she came in and she was like what the fuck like i was promised peace and and paradise and this feels dark and icky and there was some you know early sexual abuse and like not, not nice stuff that happened and so she kind of carried this this resentment of like what the fuck like i don't know why i'm upset but i am and so when she did that process her guides told her that like they 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 wipe you between lifetimes but you carry a certain energetic like tail from past lives and they didn't the guides didn't realize how much she would kind of carry and that this lifetime she's got her armor on the inside and she's strong enough to care to take to protect herself from these things but she was also able to kind of abraham talks about like either you'll 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 usually like people who want to really make a big jump in a life will attract a lot of hardship at the beginning usually and and be born into intentionally choose to be born into hard conditions like oprah you know growing up and having a lot of like hard stuff happen and then boom like just like a, a rocket going going crazy and having yeah. such a beautiful experience and so her guides were saying it was a similar thing where she kind of um had chosen this and when when she sort of uh you know integrated all those pieces she was she was she felt no more resentment at being here because she's like oh i get it like i chose it and she does have she's got two beautiful kids and she's yeah. very feminine and soft and it's like a, a totally different thing so really interesting stuff yeah that's what i teach in my medical mediumship is actually how mm -hmm. people do that like that process cool. and yeah. we actually practice it in the class mm -hmm. Exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And how to get to the root cause of what's going on with somebody, whether it's this lifetime, past lifetime, lineage, like all that. Is it an aspect of them or many aspects and how to, yeah, I don't teach, um, I don't teach people how to do the healing and clearing. And that the reason why is because there's a gazillion modalities out there. I've worked with people all over the world, Europe and in India, South America, but whatever modalities you have, then you can draw off those modalities to help heal and clear it. But when you know the source and the root of it, then you can, you can process it. You can work through it either with yourself or with your client or whoever. Mm -hmm. So I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And I like that analogy of uh, sometimes we bring a pail with us when we incarnate into this lifetime. Mm -hmm. So how do we heal and clear that? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so fascinating. What's, what's the, I, I'm, I'm personally right now, um, like what, what Abraham, uh, cause I, I had something happen recently that was very like, uh, like stressful and, and created like a little bit of a trauma response. Yeah. And where I was feeling like a little bit scared of things that could happen, but weren't likely to happen and didn't feel real. But I was, I was still having that trauma response, which I've never really had before in my life. So it was interesting to experience that. And um, I realized that when that, that my, the methods that I had been using before to kind of try and clear my energy were actually making it worse and had been making a lot of things worse for me in the past and that this event actually happened to force me to shift my my practice from uh from trying to like clear stuff and fix stuff oh wow, one second from trying to fix stuff and clear stuff to uh what abraham talks about is like you know step one meditate get into the receptive mode step two receive and actually get momentum and and build positive momentum and then just get guidance and that's kind of it like there's not much else to do and then if but but what i didn't hear from them which i when i searched abraham hicks ptsd and trauma what i heard from them was if you have something that is really intense that doesn't allow you to meditate and get into the receiving mode and build momentum and it's really strong and you yeah. it kind of feels like you're being like almost attacked by your mind like yeah. it's like telling you stuff that's not true and it feels scary to just be still and by yourself it also really showed me how people with trauma need to keep busy if they don't know how to deal with it. Cause I, I felt like I couldn't be still cause I would just get like daymare and day nightmares. So I had to like do something until I could sort of release some of that tension. 
And so uh, what I've started to do is just to ask myself like a simple question, like I'll have a, I'll have an impulse of like, Oh, I have to get up. Oh, I have to protect myself. Oh, I have to look around the corner and I'll, I'll ask myself why. And it's like, uh, cause I have to feel safe. Okay. Well, why? Uh, I don't know how it's going to, well, okay. Well, why? Well, it's not likely that something is going to happen. Right? Okay. Well, I've, actually nothing has ever happened. And I, I know why that happened. So it's, it's not, I don't think I'm going to attract that again because I don't need it. And things only come to me when I'm attracting them. Things don't just happen. It's all, it's all attraction. And so I, it's not likely. And I'll just kind of talk myself down. It'll take about 30 seconds to a minute. And that sort of like releases the edge of like feeling the stress. And I've been using that recently, but I, I don't have any other practices right now that I've uh, integrated. Do you have any thoughts on any practices that you use? That's... Um... So I like what you're doing. It's um, it's a actually a technique in psychology that you use. It's it's like you tunnel down deeper. Like 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 what's the worst that can happen? Okay, and what else could happen? Okay, like why why yeah. this? Like and then really when you come down to it, it's like oh I'm just making this story. I'm making this shit up. Like it's not. It's, but where's it coming from? You know. And then okay, but <clears throat> so there's a there's a number of techniques that I like to do is. Um, I do like what I do recommend to my students is when you feel feelings that don't feel good, just sit with them, sit with your shit, just sit, sit for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, stop running from them, stop avoiding them, stop trying to mm -hmm. stuff them down or whatever, but just sit with them. And then yeah. as you do this over and over and over again, and then create that practice of just sitting with your crap and your emotions and your feelings, eventually it, it dissipates. It's kind of an archaic way of doing it, but it works. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one end of the spectrum. So everything I do, I get my guidance. Like I'm, in, I'm like, okay, in this case, what do I, what would you suggest? So sit with your yeah. feelings. Okay. But then there's other times where I'm being guided. No, you just need to go for a run and let off some steam or do some, some, you know, go to the gym or do something or go meet for a coffee with somebody or something else. Exactly. Other than that, yeah. what I'll do is I'll purposely, I'll watch some comedy. Like I'll watch something super loud, yeah. like funny. I'll just laugh, yeah. laugh. And they'll be like, Oh, okay. I still feel I'm up now that the comedy show's done. I'll just still feel upset about that when I think about it, but it's not like an eight or nine out of 10. It might be a, you know, five or six, yep. you know, yeah. take that edge off. But, um, and then there's, of course, there's your standard modalities like doing self Reiki. There's Akashic records, healing and clearing. There's all sorts of different gazillion modalities out there that, that, you know, and, and I found for myself, I don't know if this is true for you, but that there's a lot of things that I can heal and clear on my own. But then there's also times when I feel I need to have enough humility to be able to reach out to others yeah. and and reach out for help because sometimes there's either they might have abilities that I don't ha I don't have, or I can't see what see what they're seeing from their perspective because I'm too in the trees in the forest, as they say. Yeah. So it it all depends on the situation and circumstances. Um, one of the things that I teach people to do is sometimes if if I'm like super upset about something sometimes it's internal and it's yeah. my own shit my own stuff and sometimes it's external so yeah. once i can identify, is it internal okay then it's my stuff but if it's external then i teach my students tools on how to deal with that like if it's a a soul a lost soul or something like that that's influencing me in a negative way a detrimental way how to deal with that and then once that's cleared okay clear myself and i'm good to go and just carry on like nothing happened no big deal and mm -hmm. and sometimes it's a combination of both sometimes they um, sometimes there's spiritual stuff that can affect me, but, but that's because I'm in a more vulnerable state. So yeah. when I, like you were talking about, like really just keeping myself in the light and, and it does, it does make a difference. That's what I've really noticed is that the more positive I can be, the more higher vibration, but then there's the other end of the spectrum where too many people, they put so much pressure on themselves. So, Oh, I have to always be happy. And no, that's not what we're talking about. Be real, be authentic. When those crappy emotions come up, sit with them, go through it. But in general, overall, what can you do to maybe, uh, you need to just put on some music and dance all silly for a while. Raise yeah. your vibration. Abraham talks about that. Like she, she talks about, Esther Hicks talks about that. You know, raise your vibration, do things that make you happy, do things that make you joy. Maybe some, play some cards with a friend or, you know, just do something like, so it's a, so many gazillion things we can do. It's just a matter of, tuning into what's appropriate depending on the circumstance. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I've noticed, especially with grief is that's one of the things that just got to cry it out. 
I don't know if you can relate to that. Yeah. Maybe with your father or other people you've lost in your life, but just like cry and cry and cry and cry. And, you know, when you don't feel like crying anymore, cry some more. Yeah. You know, so it depends on the, the things that come up and some things are past life stuff and it's like, boom, you can just clear that. That's done. Oh, that was easy. Mm -hmm. And then other things are multifaceted and those are a little bit, a little bit more complex is what I've noticed in my healing journey. I have stacks mm -hmm. of certificates and healing modalities. And so I just draw off of whatever tools I need, depending on what the client needs or what I need. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, I also, I have this big, I don't know if you're the same way, but I have this big, um, I'm, I'm a big fan of basically healers need healers. Mm -hmm. Coach, need, coaches need coaches. <laughs> so, um, about building community is that, okay, there's times when, you know, I, if I'm a healer and I'm doing healing on other people, well, I should probably do, you know, get some good healing on myself once in a while, mm -hmm. highly recommend, you know, things like that. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, so my, my first like foray into, uh, into healing anything and thinking about this from that perspective was the journey work that my mom um, yeah. She, my my dad passed away when I was fifteen. My mom became very depressed and and even suicidal at one point, and was very very out of it. And you know, logically so, it was her soulmate, and she felt terrible about it. And uh, she kind of stayed in the limbo for five years of kind of kind of wanting to leave because she wasn't happy, but not wanting to go because she, she felt like she had more to do, and and just wasn't wasn't really in a good place, and was taking you know whatever pills because she was a she was a PhD psychologist um, had run a school for psychologists as the the president or the whatever like she was an accomplished like kind of workaholic like hardcore lady who was you know like a boss like she she was like doing stuff and then my dad passed away and she was just like you know opposite end of the spectrum like stayed in bed most of the time and was very sad and Wow. And so she was getting uh, all this, these mixed uh, messages from people in her profession and she had money, she had contacts, she, she was, you know, she could go to the best psychologists in the world or whatever she wanted to do. And she did. And she spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on therapies and different things. And she found that it was just getting worse or the same. Like it did nothing, nothing really helped too much. And she ended up going, uh, what, the one thing that felt good for her was she always wanted to leave Vancouver. She, she uh, had been dreaming of uh, going back to the prairies where she was born in Alberta and, and living out near you in, in Cochrane and Calgary, Alberta. Yeah. And, um, and so she did. She was like, you know what? Nothing's working. I'm not feeling great. But this feels more exciting than staying here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move and go there. So she did. And she ended up randomly you know synchronistically meeting a healer who um practiced this journey work stuff and she did a two-hour session and in that session she sort of cleared some deep uh trauma and the memory that she and she shared this publicly too so i'm sure it's okay to share the memory that she shared was uh feeling like she was um in the womb and she was um getting poked at with uh needles and so her mom had tried to abort her with knitting needles because she was uh, out of wedlock in a Catholic community. And so something like that happened. I don't, who knows if that happened, but that was what she saw. And she cleared the memory and got to the base of it and, and did, did a whole journey process, which has many things which you know, uh, people can look up if they want. And, and she said that after that two hour session, she's never felt depressed ever again. After five years of no depression, of, of full depression, okay. like all the time. Wow. And so, there was something in there that sort of released that whatever, whatever had been triggered by my dad passing that kind of took her out, um, which was, I guess, these old memories or whatever, she was able to release them through this process and now felt more at peace and had continued to do journey work to kind of release. And so my first experience with this was um, doing this process where they, they tell you to feel each emotion fully like let it consume you almost yeah and then and then ask what's underneath this yeah and so you feel like whatever you're feeling you feel it fully and like 
feeling stress and blah, 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 like what's underneath this? It's like fear. Okay, feel that fear fully. And you kind of go and you just keep going. And inevitably, you, people usually go through some negative things if they're not feeling great. They go to a void where, where it's scary, but they kind of like have to just release and go into this nothingness, yeah. which then leads to more positive emotions. And they'll usually end up in some sort of connection with source feeling. And, and it's very consistent. Like it, it doesn't really matter what's going on if you stop and feel and just fully like don't, don't resist, don't distract, just let it happen. It kind of, it, it'll take you out the other end into this um, good feeling place. And, and so that was really interesting for me. And that's actually how I took on the name Shine because I started to uh, realize that the parts of me that weren't so lovely weren't actually my core essence. They were just parts of me that were out of alignment and kind of not when, what happens when I'm not feeling great. But my core essence is always love. And so that's, that was that whole name change for me. And I was a musician. I wanted a cool name for playing music too. So that was the, the end of this. But yeah, so, so that was my first uh, foray. And then, and then I've tried a bunch of other things. And I, I was on the end of the spectrum of like, you know, there's, there's some people who completely try and ignore their emotions and not feel them and not deal with them. And then I was on the other end of the spectrum of like, I wanted to get to the root cause of every negative thought that I've ever had and clear it and fix it. And that kind of backfired in some ways because it, it activated more stuff than cleared. And then I would attract more stuff to clear. And, and there's kind of like a never ending well of stuff to clear. And I felt like I was always clearing and always triggered and, and just like in a stressed out state for a, for a few years, actually, I thought like eventually I'll get to the bottom of this. And there was no bottom. <laughs> and, and I finally went to this Abraham cruise where I got to be out of my life and in a Mediterranean cruise, you know, ship and trip, which kind of, and, and doing Abraham classes, uh, you know, it kind of helped me really get out of that. And, and what I realized is like, I can just be still and meditate and then receive and I feel really good. And so I'm going to just try doing that. And it still took a couple of years of adjustments after that experience where I had the realization that, Oh, maybe I'm doing it wrong. Cause I, cause I had built so much momentum. And that's why I think this, this thing happened uh, in the, like about a month ago that was pretty traumatic and scary, but I feel like I needed that wake up call. Cause I just, it, there was so much momentum and source had kind of like tried to, you know, coax me from all these angles for, for years and finally, it was like, okay, I need something a little stronger to, like, pop me out of consistently trying to clear everything. And I was doing things like every time I felt a negative emotion, like, okay, I'm going to cry it out or I'm going to, like, breathe it out or I'm going to feel it full. Of, and it was like, eh, that's only for what – and what Abraham taught me after this was when you're, when you're doing your best to feel really good and you still can't escape it, then do something to clear it. But if you can distract yourself and feel better on your own, then do that. Like yeah. you don't need to like clear everything. Just use the clearing that works on the stuff that you can't just, that's so intense that you yeah. can't really escape. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying that. That's ex exactly. Um, and that's why I gave all those examples. Like there's times when it's like, no, I just want to put on some comedy, even though I'm in this really crappy state. Yeah. It, Cause you know, it'll just flip things around. And I'll yeah. just, next thing, I'll be like laughing, all these uh, yeah. happy endorphins running through my body. And yeah, and then, but you're right. Some people can take it way to the extreme and I'm guilty for that, you know, where I'm yeah. like, oh, I do every little and heal this and clear that. And it almost yeah. becomes, uh, uh, what's that called? Where, you know, you always think you have something wrong with you. <laughs> Neurotic, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I have to use the washroom, I'll, I'll be right back. Okay. Well, if any of you are still watching, I might as well talk away a bit. Uh, you can find, if you want to learn anything about channeling, you can go to channelinginc.com. My name is Ken Lewicki, L-E-W-I-C-K-I. -I, and yeah, I teach it, like I said, was telling to shine. I teach anything and everything you can imagine about channeling. 
um, everything from channeling your soul, your higher self, how to do past life regressions, how to actually do past life regressions on other people and go into their past lives and ancestry. And I teach people how to channel their spirit guides, how to channel, you know, random souls and um, soul family members. You'll get an introduction to your soul family, um, how to channel um, ascended masters and every kind of anything and everything and how to do it in a good safe way, of course. Um, because that's one of the most important things is channeling in a safe way. So you don't go around looking for things of the dark, but if something of the dark does come across your way, I'm going to teach you how to deal with that so that you um, can take charge and set boundaries in the spirit realm. This way you can, you can do it safely and in a fun way. And then in my more advanced channeling level three workshop, I teach people how to channel everything from sprites to fairies to dragons and uh, you name it like um, crystal divas how to do psychometry um, how to uh, how to channel angels archangels how to channel for other people um, how to do mediumship which is really cool that's channeling people's loved ones and then i teach animal communication full certification workshops which is a lot of fun um, i do teach people how to do remote viewing in that workshop i teach people how to um, channel other people's pets, the living ones, and also the deceased ones. So you name it, like, um, because really animal communication, that's what it's all about is channeling. And the cool thing about channeling, um, animals is that you're not just working with animals and their spirit guides. Yes. Animals do have spirit guides. You're also, um, working with the humans and the people. So you need to know how to channel the people. So when you're communicating with their animals, you know what to tell them. And uh, you know how to, you know, work with the humans with compassion on whatever's going on with their pet, which is tons of fun. Just talking, mm -hmm. killing time while you're. Uh, yeah, I love it. Em embracing time. Embracing uh, time. Louise Hayes, like, oh, watch your words. I'm like, oh yes, yes, okay. I'm embracing time while you're. In <laughs> I love it. This was so fun. Like what a great, and I'm glad that we didn't have just a 15 minute, you know, slot where we had to fill it, fit it all in. Cause I feel like we really had a lot to share. So oh, we can talk you. for hours. It's been a real yeah. pleasure. So glad that you decided to do um, Instagram live video and just mm -hmm. why not? Right. Like we can communicate with the community and share our dreams and our, our goals, our aspirations for the world. And I love it. Our stories, our journey. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Anything else that you want to share before we before we finish? That's pretty much it. I just want to. Yeah. I'm on, on honored to meet you. I love yeah. the community that you've been building. Like I said, I've been following you for a long time, and I, I really love the. Um, it feels really good. So let's connect after this, and yeah. uh, we can do some collaboration and go from there. Yeah, I'm really excited. So nice to connect with people who are really in a similar place and vibe and. And you can just like it feels like we're like we're like right there, like totally get each other and and yeah. you know, talk in the same language. So it's so lovely you, and you feel like my brother. Yeah, ditto. Yeah, it's so it's so I really honor the work you're doing. It's such a powerful tool for the world. Uh, oh, look at this, uh, great. Oh, thank you, great session, gentlemen. I appreciate your openness and super fun to listen to. Thank you. Uh, my, so sweet. My life mission is I really feel that I can create, uh, we can create a better world if everybody knew how to channel their guides and followed their spirit guides guidance even just a little bit. And, mm. and how much better would the world be if everybody on this planet came here and, and started doing what they're really meant to do with this lifetime? Like how much better could this world be and using channeling to do that? Yeah, I love it. That's definitely the, the, the vision behind Unite as well is like all these problems in the world, which I don't mean to, to, to sound like they're not problems, but I think everything, oh, hello. I wanted to invite the, the, the people who are watching to, to say hi as well. Hey, but thanks every, for inviting me. Yeah, yeah. Every, really, every problem. Oh, really go ahead, great please. To hear you guys. It's really great to hear you guys, and it's really nice to see males do this. I really enjoyed like, oh, listening you. to the divine masculine. So thank oh, you. So sweet. Yeah, my pleasure. I mean, it's been so fun. Um, yeah, I was just sharing about uh, part of the vision, part of the 
the mission of Unite is that when I was in my early 20s sort of learning about climate change and poverty and all these things that I thought of as bad and problems and seeing uh, things that I wanted to change, when I, when I tried to like go down the rabbit hole of like what's at the core of these, it was always the same. It was like people and fear and it's just, and people's, people's thought patterns, even if they don't know they're creating their own reality, they're creating their own reality. And so how can we, how can we support more people to become happier and more connected and be in a channeling state more often? Yeah. And that's really going to be the, the, the real core answer to, to the, to the problems of the world is to create a, a, a lot, you know, to help people. And it's not even to help them do it. It's to like, create a society that doesn't like beat it out of them as, as their kids. Cause like everyone does it naturally. Like we're all pretty intuitive as kids. And so it's like, let's just build systems that does, that don't, you know, uh, take people out of that. And, and, yeah. and if, if people are adults and have kind of been taught out of it and taught themselves out of it, let's, let's help them get back. And, and I just, I just love it. It's, it's so fun. And, and that's one of the core things that I help people do is uh, starting in channeling level one, but it goes through the whole entire, it permeates through all my workshops, is mm. self-love. Teach mm. them to love themselves. And I actually do some very specific exercises on um, how to love themselves. Because like you said, if, if people love themselves, then, then they're not out there hurting other people and hurting themselves and doing things that are out of alignment. And it yeah. really comes down to self-love mm -hmm. self-love and, and and i do agree thank you for saying this because um one of the biggest reasons that i feel that like what i do and what you do is that how we can make a positive change in this world is that yeah. when people are doing what's in alignment and because I, I have a lot of people that i work with people and i'm let's say for example there's a, a movement or a cause that people are for and some people are meant to be you know on the front lines with picket lines and some people are meant to be doing yeah. things that are in the background like working with legal stuff and other people are maybe meant to set up systems and corporations and uh maybe people are meant to go into politics but if they can do it in a way that is not skewed and tainted but do it in a way from that's in in alignment not just for them but for the world like for everybody not out of anger and uh, but more just out of oh this this is the right thing to do and my guides mm -hmm. are guiding me to help it make the most positive massive change in the world mm -hmm. for the for everybody and you do yeah. that through channel yeah. because you're doing it in alignment. You see where, like how we can make such a big difference in the world. Yeah. And Elon Musk is such a great example of this because he could either have been someone who all he did would be to, you know, picket uh, oil and gas and, and say that, you know, gasoline is dirty energy and boo and, and, and just like talk bad about it and even become very well known and famous and, and, and try and take down, oil and gas, or he could do what he did, which is just create the alternative, which is literally accelerating the inevitable adoption of clean energy. And it's like, yeah. that is such a, it's such a powerful, like, cause you can see it, like it could have gone either way. Yeah. And the way that he chose of actually creating a solution has, has had such an impact. And I mean, he's, you know, like the wealthiest person on paper and that we know of on the planet right now. And, he he did it by following his his guidance and following like this is this is what's most important to me. I, I want to see a world with clean energy. I want to see a world that is multiplanetary. I want to like whatever. And it's just so empowering and inspiring to like wow that is, is such a such a beautiful like physical example of of what happens when someone really can really creates the solution that their that their life has caused them to want versus just is upset about it or, you know, even like pushing against it in a, in a, in a really negative way. And yeah, I think there's, I don't, I, yeah, I think everyone's entitled to their own freedom and do whatever you want, but it's such a interesting, such an interesting thing to, to witness. It's like, wow, he really, he really did something like, you know, we, we drive a Tesla and it's, it's amazing. It's like the best car ever. And yeah. it's good for them. You know, it's, it's environmentally friendly and it's like, you don't ever pay gas and that's amazing and it's really fun so it's it's really that's, cool i i agree and focusing on the solution rather than the problem and yeah. and doing what's how can i make the world a better place no matter what your 
no matter what your skill sets are. Some of it's going to be big and large and some of it's going to be like just being the best parent I can to raise my children. Yeah. And then that generation grows up, like you said, enhancing their spiritual abilities and their gifts because not only did you not beat it out of them, but you welcomed them and you welcome them and say, yeah, oh yeah, that's, you're sensing your spirit guide right on and I know what you're talking about. And so I don't necessarily teach children uh, just because mm -hmm. they don't have the attention span to sit through like a full weekend workshop, but I teach yeah. parents and grandparents so that they can yeah. help their children and the next generation coming up. And I've been doing this long enough, Shine, where I've literally had you know, children that were like five, six years old, and then I've helped the grandparents, and then their grandparents have helped them, and now they're teenagers, and they still have crystals, and they still talk about spirituality, even in their teens, and, and they're, you know, and they go to yoga class, you know, and it's great, it's wonderful. I'm like, if I help that child, you know, mm. through the grandparents, it's what a beautiful gift. Mm. Wow. That's so cool. Someone, I was, I was on a call the other day with um, a business analyst from SFU and I had, I had sort of asked for more information on their program that, that were how they could help certain businesses. And, and we, we get on the call and he's, he's like, he's looked at our website and gone on our site and he's obviously a little bit like skeptical and kind of triggered about it. And he's like, you know, well, what are you going to do about like all this crap that doesn't have any evidence and like crystals like there's no evidence that crystals do anything like he use that as an example and i'm and, and i didn't have an answer other than i was like you're obviously not our target audience and that's okay like you know whatever it's all good but but i was curious i'm like i wonder what crystals do so do you know do you have a do you have an answer i'm sure you've i'm sure you do well that's actually i'm glad you mentioned crystals i actually teach people how to uh, do like what's called psychometry where you can actually read objects including crystals mm -hmm. So that's one of the exercises I do in my channeling level three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Objects. Yeah. So you got it. Yeah. yeah. And, and, um, my partner's name is Crystal. And so she surrounds me with crystals. <laughs> I love that name, by the way. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so like, depending on the crystals, like I actually get them to, to first, the first thing they have to do is clear their mind because one of the most important things about being a, ch a channeler is being a clear channel which means getting mm -hmm. yourself out of the way. So you're yeah. not gonna influence the answer what you think the, this crystal does. So I get them to hold their hand out with nothing in it. Then I get them to feel what their hand feels like with nothing in it. Then I say, okay, now pick up your crystal and what are you getting from the crystal? And mm -hmm. then I get them to put, the, put it down, write, write the answers. And then I get them to connect with the crystal diva because some crystals, not all crystals, but some crystals um, have crystal diva, divas, and then uh, the crystal diva will give them even a, help them to elaborate and get more information about what the crystal really does. Hmm. And then they say, okay, now you're not just going to go blindly into a crystal store and believe all these things that are written on the piece of paper or in the crystal book, but instead now you can actually get the, get it directly from the source. And it might also differ per person because some people might need different things and that crystal can provide different things to different people depending on what that person. Interesting. So could you, like the way that I'm interpreting this is like, we don't need crystals to do anything specific, but they could be like little, um, little helpers along the way if, if we somehow, need a reminder or we're gonna like imbue them with a certain energy or we feel a certain way when we touch them, then they can act as this kind of anchor point or reminder of like, oh right, this crystal and I, and, and I was holding it when I was grieving or when I had whatever. And so I'm gonna, this is gonna be my crystal for when I'm going through a hard time. It's it's gonna help me transmute. And it's kind of like a belief thing and it can and you can do it without it, but it's like a it's like a, a thing that you can use if you want. Does that I don't, I don't understand them at all. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, uh, they call those things, uh, the, what are they called? The hap, the, the, rub, the stones that you, I don't know, this guy from Africa, he made, like, he's like, oh, you, you just rub this rock whenever you're feeling sad or whatever. And it's just, it's more of a placebo effect kind of thing, yeah, but it, yeah. it, it, but crystals aren't crystals actually do have properties about them that are real. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, they do have different, like some have 
grounding properties, some have high vibration properties, some have clearing properties. There's a whole range of different properties that they can do. Um, some help you to like calm down, some are releasing, um, and there's a whole wide range of them. And you're right, they're assistants, they're helpers. What I don't want people to do is become dependent or reliant on not just crystals, but anything, but yeah. instead, oh, your guides are guiding you. Okay, now this would be a, a, a time when this crystal would be useful for you. Okay, so then that's when you would hold that crystal. Most crystals, from what I've found, is you have to physically touch them to get the, the most benefit out of them. Um, just mm -hmm. having it in your pocket or whatever doesn't usually isn't enough. So most crystals, you actually need to touch them for them to get the most benefit. And, and then um, other times, it's like, no, I don't need crystals. But some people get so dependent on crystals, they're like, oh, if I don't have this certain crystal bracelet before I leave the house, something bad's going to happen. No, it's not right. So yeah, that's, that's like a negative expectation, which it doesn't serve you usually. Or, or I can't channel without my crystals or whatever. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. what? I'm like, so. <laughs> doesn't work like that, bro. Yeah, people have these weird beliefs and that they create. And, and that's mm. the last thing I want them to do. And, but crystals are a very valuable tool. And connecting with a crystal diva is really, really powerful. Mm. Like, you learn to connect with them. They're, they're like beings. They're like kind of like sprites and fairies in the elemental kingdom and so they they work with crystals specifically so when the crystals are mined usually in a mine in a cave then they're scattered throughout the world and sold in different stores and places but there's crystal divas that are associated with that those crystals and mm -hmm. not not all crystals have crystal divas but a lot do and just because it doesn't have a crystal diva doesn't mean they're not useful and and valuable but anyways if it does have a crystal diva then you can tune into that crystal diva and find out how to get the most out of that crystal. And so when you say crystal diva, like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of this from like a, a mass consciousness perspective. Like if this was on like late night TV, people would be like, oh, this guy's kind of crazy and weird and, and like, you know, making stuff up and that's fine. But what I'm in terms what I'm, and, but I, I, I'm, I'm understanding what you're saying and I believe in this. And so what I'm interpreting is that like there's, there's source, which is like all that is, but then there's souls, which are more personalized versions of all that is, but are still non-physical. And right. so I think what you're saying is that, you know, uh, plants or crystals or anything can have its non-physical counterpart. And so what you're saying is the crystal diva is just the non-physical part of a physical thing. Is that clear, accurate? Uh, crystals are crystal divas are actually like so you know have you you've seen or pictures of like sprites and fairies right the, that that side of things is not i was born into this life uh understanding and accepting a lot of metaphysical things but having very little access to them because i feel like this my role in this life is to be a bridge and so I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I, I like to feel, I actually feel so blessed because I get to like, I feel like I get to watch like mainstream movies and listen to like pop songs. And I'm just, I feel really connected to the mainstream. Dang and that. I have a lot of friends who are like way out there and yeah. are really spiritual and people, a lot of people think they're kind of weird, but I, my, I feel like my role in this life is to be more of a bridge and, and to be, to be more like, in the middle and so I, I actually I feel like I chose not to have access to as much uh, like awareness of some of these things because I, I, I just don't have a sense of it other than I've heard that people talk about them but I don't, yeah. that yeah. doesn't mean anything to me yet 10 years ago I never channeled crystal divas or sure, yeah. rights and yeah. or, you know, dragons and they, they do exist they really do um, they just they exist in a different reality mm. yeah and so the, they actually do, they're tangible. They're, when I get people, it's really cool because when I get people to, um, so that's my level three curriculum. This is like advanced, advanced. That's my expert level. And that's why I save it for level three is because um, most people aren't there yet. Like a lot of people, they're like, I don't know. But by the time they get yeah. through level one, they're like, okay, maybe I'm ready for this. And then mm -hmm. once they experience it, because I don't tell them about it, I actually have them experience it. And then I say, check to see if they have a soul. And they're like, do they have a soul? And they're like, no, right. And it's not good or bad or right or wrong. They just don't need one for their makeup. They're not made that way. They're not created that way. So mm. It's they do exist though. Like they they fly around. They really do exist just in a different reality. 
And they, what the cool thing is, is um, they can actually provide very practical, useful, like, again, everything, remember I talked about earlier about everything that I teach people, I try to relate it back to how can this be practical? So working with the Kiva as to, okay, what does this crystal really do? How do I know which crystal to choose and which is going to be the most beneficial for me? And then working with your spirit guides to help you with that as well. And like, do you see how that can really be useful stuff? So you, you I think you've, because all the crystals you have around in your place, because you're your partner there, um, I'm sure you haven't, you've had enough experience with crystals where you know that there's different energies in them. No. Have I, you ever... I, with not them, yet. Like, have you felt the energies in them? Like, if you like, go, oh, this one's kind of different than this one. Maybe that's something not, to play with. Or, not really, but a, like a little bit. But I, it's really not something that I've, I've explored. That's why I'm I'm open and just feel like I'm new to it. I'm not gonna lie, it's subtle. Like when I first, yeah. when I first like ten years ago, someone would put a crystal in my hand. They're like, "Can you feel that? Can you feel that?" I'm like, "No, it feels like feels like a rock to me." But okay i couldn't feel anything but now i'm like super sensitive to energies and crystals and all that where i wasn't very long ago and that's good that shows the healing that i've done that shows the work that i've done um and also to i'm more open-minded like i was a little bit close-minded back then <laughs> mm -hmm. so it's just yeah i get where you're at i know what it's like i've been there i'm like no, I don't feel anything. How about this one? No, still nothing. How about this one? No, but well, I definitely, I definitely feel like I can feel like, like this one feels like relaxing, but I don't want to hold on to it very long. And, and this one feels more like I don't want to hold on to it at all. Like that's, that's the, the, the extent is I'm kind of just intuitive of like, Oh, this one feels nice. Like, I feel like if I could put this one in my pocket, like it yeah. feels more, I don't know what that means, but I'm guessing that it's properties are more conducive to what I'm, needing right now or whatever but yeah like that's 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 the extent that i feel them yeah yeah fun i love it <laughs> it's so fun so cool thank you for this time yeah it's so fun i want to talk about aliens but maybe another time <laughs> <laughs> yeah i actually talk about it and i started channeling level one on purpose to because what i do is i teach them how to channel their soul mm. and i teach them how to i take them through a past life regression on a different planet mm. to show people that hey you know what you've lived on different planets as well mm. and if you look around in the room right now um we're all aliens right yeah i mean i when i when i started listening to bashar i was like this feels really true to me it just resonated and it made sense and he yeah. talks about the, the like the reason that aliens aren't physically showing up with ships is because they're literally in a different dimension and we can't really interact with them right now because it's they're too high frequency and they would kind of like fry our circuitry and it's just not it's not conducive yet but yeah. maybe we'll kind of build ourselves up or we can communicate with them like in channeling or whatever and Abraham has said the same thing that of course life is is bountiful in the universe and a lot of it is is other dimensional and there's multiple there's lots of things happening and so that's okay. a that's a, a pretty new thing for me too I don't feel like I understand it totally but I know that when I first got into Bashar I was like this feels really on the money and I like him as a channel and person and so I, it, it resonated and same with Abraham I'm like I'm willing to kind of give what they're talking about a lot of uh, glances because of the, I just feel a lot of resonance with, with most of what they say. So I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll get, I'll get into that and just feel it out. And at the end of the day, it's like, you know, maybe not as practical as some of the Abraham stuff, but he does, he does keep it practical in lots of ways. So yeah, I, I love, I love both of them. It's, it's so fun. I love, I love learning about this stuff. It's just, it's just exciting. Oh, have yeah. you guys have you guys ever heard of the law the law of one? I haven't. I, I've heard of it, but I have no idea what it means. Can you there explain you it? Yeah, it'll take you to another to another dimension. Um, Aaron Epke out of Colorado has a YouTube video um, channel, and he he dissects it and makes it very 
simple and easy to understand the law of one with Ra because mm -hmm. it's quite complex and it was channeled by I think the entities are out of Venus but mm -hmm. it explains like 3d 4d 5d all the way up and it explains the different vibrations and what you find at each level of consciousness and why they're there and then sort mm -hmm. of why we're we're on 3d kind of trying to figure out how to be these multi-dimensional beings right and how we can, you know, like Ken said, we can channel, we can connect crystals, just, you know, angels, whatever works, even with Abraham right now, you're connecting to that consciousness. So yeah, check uh -huh. it out. Um, brilliant stuff. Yeah. He could probably be part of your community. He's just kind of blown uh -huh. up since COVID, like just uh -huh. out of the last two years. So just a great teacher. And um, his it. father, I think, was an evangelicist. So he grew up uh -huh. in a really strict kind of like listening to like all of the scriptures and Christians oh. and then he kind of just went uh yeah no <laughs> right so yeah just something that might kind of and, and the other good teachers of course Dolores Canyon she teaches some great stuff on oh. QHHT and, and hypnotherapy stuff all of her books oh. and stuff like that and her connections to the oh. ETs so and sorry I didn't mean to interrupt cool. you guys' conversation I'm, I'm no, sorry no you're welcome I that's why we're having so sorry about that no 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 you're, you're very welcome that's what you're, you're you're here for a reason obviously um that's so cool maybe you guys can add any links of what we talked about um in the comments of this video uh yeah. and then people can, can access it and we'll we'll yeah we'll, we'll share this around and yeah what a pleasure i mean so fun so fun such a good time thank you so much thank you for having me on it's been a real honor so we've got Ken here, and what's your, Christine, Morgan? I think that's her name. Amazing. So we will, we'll, we'll sign off. And so much love. What a, what a good time. Yeah. Yeah. It's a real honor meeting you, and a pleasure, and yeah. let's stuff connect. Yeah, we will. Much love. Good night, everyone. Thanks Have for watching. Day. Bye. Bye.